Hey everybody, here I'm gonna use my clay to set up a soldering operation. I'm just getting a pretty big chunk out because it's a bigger piece that I need to solder. Feels a little weird on your hands, um, but it's um, non-toxic. So it's definitely something that is safe to use, has little kind of uh, insulating things in there. Uh, wash your hands after you use it, or some people will go ahead and just not even touch it and use, um, use like uh, gloves. Sometimes I do. When I pack it, I always am using gloves. Uh, I've always done that. Um, but today we are going to solder prongs right here. These two grooves I have made here and two grooves I've made there. I'm going to solder the prongs in place. So I set it down into the clay so that it's kind of in there easily. Um, I'm soldering uh, 18 karat gold to sterling silver. Kind of rinsed off my hands here. And I've already pre-cut each one of the tiny little prongs. They're sitting here on my bench. And I'm gonna get those set up. So I kind of straightened them all. So they're each little piece. And so what I do is I go ahead and have them slide right down into the hole. I want to make sure I have enough material sticking up. I don't want to shove it too deep because I still want to be able to shape those and have those bend over. So I make sure they're below the bottom so I don't have a prong sticking up higher than the edge. Uh, but I have them in there now. And then I always come in and I kind of push on that bottom to make sure that they're up there really nicely. I don't want the clay to come up real high. You can do it, you don't have to do it with the end of your tweezers, but you can do it even just with kind of your finger. And then go ahead and get the other one set up on the other side. You can flux this before you go ahead and set these up. That is one uh, way to do it. I will go ahead and flux. Um, of course, I drop one of my prongs into the big huge mess of God knows where. All right. Sorry, took a minute to find. And then I get that one going in there like that. And I'm looking straight down on it for me, angled, um, at, to make sure that these are flush into those grooves. Those grooves I have cut with a one millimeter uh, end file. Um, Auto Fry sells that file. It's great for 18 gauge wire. You can get them in different thicknesses. They're a super awesome file. They just have this texture on the end. This one here is a 0.6 millimeter thickness. So what you do is you just kind of file along, make that. This is in one of my videos that is about to be released again uh, for everyone uh, with clay. And then um, that's a one millimeter. You can barely see it, but it says one there. And then this one here, it says 0.6. I have a 0.8 as well. I usually start with a 0.6, go up to 0.8, and then to one millimeter to get to 18 gauge. Uh, they go thicker, and uh, I don't think they go uh, much smaller, uh, but it creates this perfect little groove to set your prongs in and be able to solder really easily on there. Oops, see, I've shifted everything. So now I'm going to go ahead and add that flux on those little joints. Way too much flux there. So. I just use a toothpick to apply my flux. I make sure it's getting down in there so that it's gonna flow. Same thing over here. Get our 
flex all in there. All right, so I'm gonna solder the prongs on with uh, medium solder, uh, silver solder over um, gold because I'm soldering it to silver. So I don't want to use like gold solder and have it flow over and then be all in the silver area. So my best bet is to go ahead and use silver solder. So I already have some pieces already laid out uh, down here. Uh, it's kind of, I do little divisions and how I'm gonna move my gold solder over. Um, and then uh, I just uh, pick up a piece of solder and I pick solder all these. You can set this up so this is, um, in a different position if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a lot of this heating up on the opposite side here of coming into my frame. So I'm gonna heat up. It's a pretty big piece here, but this is kind of isolated on the edge because I have the cutout on the back of the mountain and uh, moon. So I'm going ahead and I'm avoiding the tops of that gold because I do not want to heat up at all for that. I've set that piece of little solder there. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a second one and get that set up. So I'm going to get that to stick right in place. And I've got both those pieces of solder. You can see one here and one here. You don't need a ton because it's going to fill right into that little gap. And I'm going to go ahead and just keep heating there. You really don't need to concentrate any kind of heat onto the gold at all because you'll get a transfer of heat. Oops, so there my solder flowed, but it flowed all over the metal. Same thing happened here but I know that it's going into the joint and I got those soldered on. So that will happen. So essentially what's gonna happen is that your solder's gonna flow in between. So that can be uh, a challenge uh, in kind of like how do we kind of deal with that. So this here, I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this up so I can kind of see a little bit better where I'm placing solder. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat from behind again. I'm gonna grab that little solder. I'm gonna come a little bit different position to bring that solder in. I'm gonna have it sit at that top edge Again, avoiding heating on that prong, even though that went right up the prong, what I was trying to avoid. So I'm trying to get it at that joint of where that joint is. So it runs down. That one did pretty well. I'm gonna try to get this to flow down. I'm not sure how successful I'm being here kind of doing a weird angle so you guys can all see. Any solder that's overflowing, you can probably get cleaned off the outer part of that prong. But your goal here is to get it to flow down that channel that you build for that prong to sit in. And it's hard to tell for sure, but I think I got this Going down, there we go. Nice solder flow. All right, solder done. What I'm gonna do at this point is just go ahead and let the clay cool. You can see how the clay hardens here, like where you did soldering, like it's real hard, but all this still here is pretty soft. So I save this part, the softer part, like I'll break it off once everything's cooled down some and I'll save this and put this right back into the jar of where all my fresh stuff is. So it, it's definitely reusable. You don't have to worry about it like doing anything to your other stuff. So I will go ahead and once this cools and breaks out, it's still hot, so uh, breaks out, I'll uh, take all of the softer bits and kind of just take this really hard chunky stuff and I keep that into a jar 
of bits that are hardened, and then I'll recycle those and reconstitute those um, as um, a way to reuse the clay uh, and keep reusing it. And uh, you can use it and reuse it, reconstitute it like that, probably anywhere between um, uh, two and three times, um, sometimes more. I know people that have had their same original like ball of clay and they keep recycling it. But in general, um, I usually say two or three times before you're starting to mix in new uh, is a, a good rule of thumb. Feel free to ask me questions or feel free to um, comment and send me messages. Uh, my clay is going to be uh, ready on Monday and um, you'll be able to buy it then. So getting it all jarred up this weekend. Thanks guys.